love y'all that are already standing, just like waiting for it to happen. Just check. <laughs> Do we go now? Do we All go? right. Here we go. Batteries die, folks. <laughs> let's stand on up. Let's worship together, though. All right? This is a new fun one. Let's worship together. <laughs> Yeah. 
weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. You called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer.
Come on, give God a big hand clap this morning. Come on, give God some praise like you mean it in the house today. Come on. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord today. As you clap and as you praise God, the devil's running away. Come on. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Man. Can y'all see that? That's like goosebumps on top of goosebumps right there. Y'all feel it? I mean, there's just a serious, serious anointing in the house today. And uh, it's because the great I am is here. His presence is here. Amen. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, He is the answer for it all. Amen. And uh, you can't do it, but He can. And greater is He that is in us, right, than He that is in the world. So the great I am is in us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your presence that is here. Holy Spirit, would you just continue to touch and minister to your people today. Love on your children right now. God, begin to just move and touch. Lord, I love you. Lord, you're so good. You're so faithful. Come on, just worship him for a moment. I just feel him moving in here. Let's just love on him. Come on, just in your own way. You may want to lift your hands up to him. You may just want to bow your head, whatever it may be. But right now, just, come on, just take a moment just to love on him. Jesus, we love you. Come on, he got you through another week. Just love on him. He's heard your prayer today. Just love on him. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your touch. Lord, I thank you. You know each and every person here under the sound of my voice, and you know what they're facing. You know each and every person who's watching online right now, and you know exactly what they're going through and what they're facing. Holy Spirit, I thank you. There's no barriers between computers and TVs and your anointing. I pray right now that you would touch and you would minister and you would heal and you would restore. And we thank you for it today. We praise you for it today. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you. It's already been a great day, but I feel like we're just getting ready to go to a whole new place in God today. Amen. Come on, give him a big hand clap this morning. Come on, praise him like you mean it today. God bless you. Amen. Well, before you're seated, turn around and shake hands with two or three people. If you're near someone that is a guest, welcome them. Introduce yourself. Amen. We are so glad to have everyone with us today. What a great crowd for second service. We appreciate your faithfulness that you're out here today at church. If you by chance are a guest with us today, as you're seated, if you'll look at the, on the back of the chair in front of you there, you will see a visitor's card. If you would take and fill that out, turn it in during the offering or turn it in out in the foyer, it'll get to us. We'll make contact with you. We just simply want to get to know you and uh, it'll give us an opportunity to visit with you. And if you have any questions, you can share with us at that time. Let's give all of our guests a great big hand. We're glad to have them today. Amen. Our ushers are coming. We're going to wait up on you for our Sunday morning tithes and offering, give you an opportunity to give. While they're coming and making their way, let me just say a quick plug for our Men of Life Golf is today. This is our first four-man scramble. So after church today, if you would like to join us, you've not signed up, there's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. There's a great big trophy out there. It's called Life Trophy. Uh, and... Uh, Right beneath that is the uh, little information sheet. You can fill that out. We'd love for you to come be a part of us today. Great time of fellowship. So remember that. Amen. Lord, we love you. What a privilege. What an honor it is to be in your house today. We've already sensed your presence in a very special way through our singing and worship. And now as we come to this part of the service where we simply give back to you. I just ask, Lord, that you would just place within our hearts, speak to us, Lord, what you would have us to give, and may we be open and faithful to give to you today. 
We ask it according to your will, and we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. It's in your name we ask it. And everybody say it. Amen. If you're giving toward your tithe challenge, mark TC on your check or on uh, the envelope. And if you're giving towards your pledge, make sure you mark that so we can designate that area as well. Thank you. Middle of Life will be May 8th at 6 p.m. here at Life Church. We hope you can join us for teaching, fellowship, and food. Ladies of Life will be May 14th at 6 p.m. We'll have free food and child care provided. If you'd like more information or to register, please visit our info center. Want to do something great for our community? Come join us May 8th at 5.30 p.m. at Shared Blessings for Nutrition Club. What up, Life Church? I want you to join with me on May 30th at 7 p.m. at the Jeff Lee Pool for a fun family night event with our church community. The cart guy will be providing food for $5 a plate. Also, water baptisms are happening. If you want to make that happen, go please sign up at the Info Center. I hope to see you there. Cost is $175 per student and $50 for leaders. Spots will fill up fast, so put your deposit down today. For more info or to sign up, visit our info center. Well, good morning, everybody. It is good to see you all here today. We're glad you've joined us. Just a couple of things that uh, were not on the announcement. Uh, this summer, Life Church is going to have its own fireworks stand right out here in the parking lot. So for all your firework needs, anything you want to explode, we'll be able to supply you with that. And all the funds we raise from that will go to Camp Life 2019 because we'll have already returned from camp. So that's our first fundraiser for the next summer. So we do appreciate your support. You might want to volunteer and help work it. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun times. And it'll be good, and we're going to sell it right here in the parking lot. Pretty fun. Also, last week, how many of you were here and you saw and you participated in a Wednesday night survey? Oh, yes. Lift your hands. I got the results, lots of charts and graphs and all kinds of fun stuff. But I want to give you just the nuts and bolts of it really quick, and then we'll move on. We asked you if you felt a midweek service was necessary as a church. And... 91% of you said yes. So that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Here's the clincher. 54% of you said you would come. So basically, you want me here, but you aren't coming. Sinner. Uh, it boiled down to 125 families said yes, 81 said no, and 84 skipped the question. <laughs> That's real sin in your life right there, skipping a question. And, uh, anyway, so what it says to me is we're going to make some changes. Wednesday nights will not be ending as of this moment. We're just going to be doing some adjustments. So uh, this summer, pretty soon, you're going to see a summer schedule. Different things will be going on for adults, kids, and teenagers. Our youth service is on Wednesday night. That's remaining. We're going to have that. So youth, you just know it's set. They're going to be adjusting, doing different things. It'll be fun, but it's just uh, that's youth service. Kids classes on Wednesday nights are going to be adjusted. We've got new curriculum we're investigating. We're going to be doing some things that's going to be a lot of deep Bible teaching for them, a lot of Bible memorization. We're going to be splitting boys and girls up. And so you might be helping up, wanting to help out in that area. Sundays may not be your thing, but Wednesday nights, smaller crew might be your thing. You could help us out with that. It would be awesome. And uh, so that's going to be happening. And then this fall, when we do our back-to-school bash after that, there will be a fall semester schedule for adults classes. We're going to be dividing up. We're going to be having some different things for adults. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, stay tuned to that, and uh, it's going to be good. 
whether you come or not, it's going to be good. Amen? So, and there's no condemnation. I know some of you cannot come. You have work. You have different things. But uh, we appreciate you coming when you can. Would you stand with us? Let's do our life confession together out loud, boldly. Let's say it. Let's believe it. Let's get ourselves ready for the Word of God. Are you ready? The life I live is not my own. It is anchored in Christ Jesus who loves me. I choose to accept Him whose love accepts me, heals me, and changes me so I can love others. I am alive, and so is God's Word. I open my eyes to see my ears to hear, my heart to receive. Today is a good day. This is my life confession. Come on, give God a big hand clap this morning. Come on. Now look for two people you do not know. Introduce yourself. Ready, set, go. Would you give these musicians a big hand? Didn't they do a good job today? We sure appreciate them. Give our tech booth a hand. They do a good job too. You guys never even get, they just look at the back of your heads all the time, but they do a good job. Without them, we wouldn't have sound or lights or videos or nothing. So we really appreciate them. We're in a series here called Cycles, and we've been talking about uh, various cycles. How many of you have been able to be a part of at least one of these services where we've talked about cycles? Anybody? Good, good, good. Okay. Cycles is defined as a series of events, something that repeats, something that has rhythm, something that has rotation or is a pattern. You find that a lot of times in life, life is filled with cycles. Amen? Amen. And we all experience them. Everybody experiences a cycle. Everybody is in a cycle, some way, shape, or form today. Some of you are facing different types of cycles, but there are all kinds of them. And today, as we bring this series to a close, I want to talk to you about a cycle that I believe is very important for us to have some understanding on, and that is the cycle of seasons. The cycle of of seasons because there are all kinds of seasons that we face in this life amen all kinds of seasons that we go through genesis 8 22 it says as long as the earth continues planting and harvest cold and hot summer and winter day and night will not stop so of all the seasons which one do you find yourself in today Maybe you're in the summer season. You're in the heat of the battle. You are fighting for your life. You are trying to keep your head above water because there is something raging in your home or in your family or in your marriage, whatever it may be. You are facing a battle, and it seems to be never-ending. For some of us, we're in the fall season. The fall season is the one that represents the cooling down from the battle or the heat, but yet... Now we're facing the consequences and the aftermath of the summer. We're facing all the fallout of everything we went through through that storm. And so we see ourselves going through things that we never thought we'd go through. Some of us this morning may be in winter. Winter is where something has died. Something has ceased to exist. You're going through something you never thought you would go through. And now you're wondering how you're going to get through it. And what decision you need to make at this time. And know this, winter is one of the most important seasons to be determined to not quit. Because it looks dead doesn't mean you are dead. Amen? I mean, you go around in the wintertime, all the trees have lost their green leaves. Everything looks dead and barren, but actually everything is very much alive. And those, although on the outside it looks dead, the inside is going deeper into the ground to get its nutrients. Those roots are living. They're going further for water and further for everything it needs to live and to make it. And I'm here to tell you, when you're going through a winter experience, that's the time to dig in and go deeper in God because you're going to find the nourishment you need to make it in this life. Amen? 
Romans chapter 11 verse 18 says, you do not support the root, the root supports you. Where are your roots today? If your roots are in the wrong thing, that's what's feeding you. So you're going to have the wrong thing going through you. If your roots are wrapped up in what the world has to offer you, you're only going to bear the fruit of the world. But if your roots are going deeper in God, you're going to bear His fruit. And you're going to make it. You're going to go further than you ever thought possible in the Lord. Amen? Romans 4.17 says, Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life. I love that. And who creates new things out of nothing. Oh my goodness, have you ever been there? All ten of you, that's awesome. Which maybe brings you to the spring season. The spring season, it's the new life. It's the new excitement. Everything's budding out. It's coming back to life. I'm the goofball that planted my garden too early this season. You know, last weekend it was 32 degrees. This weekend it was 84 you know, I kind of think that Mother Nature over Oklahoma has got personality. To, I mean, it's, she's all over the map. But I planted my stuff a little too early. And so then it froze and everything got bit. Have you ever been bit in life? It got bit and I had to cut it back. And now I'm seeing now that it's getting warmer, some of the stuff that looked like it got killed and dead, green is coming back up. And some of you may have gone through a season that felt like it had taken you out. But I'm here to tell you, you're turning green again. A good green, not vomit green. Are you all with me? Nobody wants vomit green. But it's a season. And it's a cycle of seasons. And some of you are in the spring season. Isaiah 43 verse 19 says, I'm doing a new thing. How many of you love that? Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way where there seems to be no way. Somebody shout right now, something new. Now look at your neighbor and tell him it's happening for you. Amen. Someone here today is very discouraged with life. You may be discouraged. You may be feeling down. But I've been sent here to tell you it's just a cycle. It's just a season cycle, and you will come through it. Every storm runs out of rain, and the sun shines again. Amen? And so you're going to get through this thing. Amen? Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. No matter the season, no matter the cycle, the word stands. No matter the storm, no matter the sunshine, the word stands. No matter if you feel like you're dying or you're coming back to life, the word stands. Amen? So how do we survive the season of cycles? How do we survive this season of cycles? We find the answer in John 15. We're going to begin reading at verse 1. We're going to go to verse 9. If you have your Bible, turn there. Get your mobile device open. Follow along with me. Get your notebook out, your pen. Take some notes. Learn something. Remember it. Apply it to your life. And don't just tune me out. Thank you. That was perfect. John 15, we're going to begin at verse 1. It says, I am the true vine. This is Jesus speaking. And my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Verse 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Are you hearing something repetitive here? Verse 5, I am the vine. You're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Verse 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Remain in my love. You see, the key to surviving cycles is to remain. Remain. 
to remain is defined as to continue to exist, especially after others have ceased to. Have you ever met somebody that started going through something tough in their life and they ran away? They vacated it. They left it. Because how many of you know sometimes it's easier to quit than it is to stick it out? It's easier to just throw in the towel than to see yourself through the challenge and the trial and the circumstance and the situation that you may be facing. Galatians 5 verse 7 says, you were running a good race. Who stopped you from following the true way? How many of you have ever been running for God and God's doing some great things in your life and then somewhere along the way you find yourself off track? You find yourself on a path that isn't good. You find yourself doing things that aren't good. And you find yourself at a place of quitting your faith, walking away from your faith, walking away from everything you've held true, everything you thought was right, everything you thought was good. Over my years of pastoring, I can tell you, I've watched as the season cycle has affected people. Things get rough. The temperature rises, storms hit someone's home, and people run for the shelter of the church house when a storm hits. They run into God. Some of you know, whenever the bottom is pulled out from under you, you're like, okay, all I've got's God. So I'm going to lean into him. I want to find out what he says. And what I found in that cycle is that a lot of times the very same people that they run to God when everything goes bad, God makes a way, God moves in their life, God makes a way and provides for them. They celebrate the good that God has done, but then it's not very long after that that they fall back into the trap of life as normal. God worked in my life, so now I can go back to doing what I want to do. God changed my situation, so now I can start making decisions on my own again. They're nowhere to be found in the church house because now they are not remaining. God took care of this. I don't need the church anymore. God healed my home. I don't need God anymore. God saved my soul. I'm good. Now I can go play. But what's interesting is you may not find them in the church, but they'll be back with the very same people that couldn't help them when the storm came in their life, and now they're hanging around with those people again, and they're wondering why when the storm comes again, those people will not be able to help them. Because those are the fair weather friends, the friends that are with you when it's fun and when it's a party. But when things get rough, who are your friends? When people turn on you, who are your friends? When you get sick in your body, who are your friends? Who are the people that you're going to lean into? I've watched well-meaning believers fall away from their commitment to attending church and ultimately place their walk with God onto a shelf because everything seemed to be okay in their lives. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, you should not stay away from the church meetings. Well, y'all don't shout me down at one time. It says you should not stay away from the church meetings as some are doing, but you should meet together. I'm here to tell you weekends at Life Church are vital and are important. And if we are not here, we are missing out on something. Because every time we gather, God has something for us. Amen? It's vitally important that we remain in his house and remain around his word and remain in times of worship and remain in servanthood and remain with our children and remain with our students. Why? Because when we remain, we're going to always leave having to receive something. You are hooked up to the vine. You're getting the nutrients from the vine. If you're disconnected from the vine, you are going to starve. It's going to affect your life. What are you saying, Pastor Taryn? I don't get this vine business and this all that all I'm saying is if you want to make it in this life and you want to survive the cycles of seasons you got to stay right smack dab in the middle of what God is doing and to stay smack dab right in the middle of what God is doing you have to remain in church you have to remain around the word you have to remain around worship you have to hang around with the right people because if you don't it's going to affect you it's going to affect you Amen? So the weekend is vital. It says you should meet together. That's what we're doing. And encourage each other. That's what happens here. I sure hope you leave encouraged when you leave church. I sure do. It makes me better. I feel better after I've been in God's presence. So it says you should meet together, encourage each other, do this even more as you see the day coming. What's the day talking about? It's talking about the return of Christ. Christ could return at any moment for his church. 
Who's he going to take home? Those who are remaining in him. If we're disconnected from God, we're not going to be going. So let's get as many people connected to God as we can. I don't want anybody going to hell for my community. Some of you are like, I got a few. <laughs> Jesus loves them too. Heaven's going to have enough space for them. You don't have to see them. Of course, at that point, you won't care. Amen. But it also says, as you see the day coming. Maybe it could also mean, how about the next time a storm's coming? The next time a day that's rough is coming? The next time the heat's getting ready to be turned up? The next time you're going through a season you don't understand and the things are getting bad? How about that day, when that day is coming? Or how about when you're experiencing a thorn in the flesh that keeps reminding you of your weaknesses and your struggles? Have you ever been there? Paul talked about it in Scripture when he said in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 9, he said, to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. Everybody say torment. To torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged God, take it away. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. Man. How many of you have ever begged God to take something away and he never did? Do you want to know why? Because he's using what torments you to mentor you. If you just kind of flip the word around, it gets clear. I've been through some things in my life that have tormented me, and I begged God to take them away, and he took those away. There have been some other things I begged God to take away he never did. And then I realize now he's using it to make me better. Because when I'm weak, I find out where my strength is. My strength never lies in me, it lies in him. If we can make it on our own terms through the seasons of life, we would have no need for God. But God knows we can't make it through the seasons of life on our own. I can't, you can't, nobody can. But when we have Jesus in the middle of our seasons, no matter what comes against us, we're going to get through it. No matter what comes against us, we're going to make it. We're going to rise above it. Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Come on, somebody. But you have to ask sometimes, why this season? Well, because what torments us a lot of times is what God uses to mentor us, to make us better. God uses every season to develop us into his perfect plan. It's just a season. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's just a season. This is about to pass. And will you have remained when it does pass? When we realize God is using that storm or God is using the hell we've been through, the rainy days, the lonely days, the rejection, the hurt, and the pain to shape us like a mentor, we stop asking God to give us what we think we need and we start saying, God, whatever I need, you do it. Not my will, but your will be done. We change our prayers. We begin to pray what God wants us to pray, and we begin to think the way God wants us to think. John 15, verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches, and those who remain in me and I in them, what's the next words, will produce. You're going to produce no matter if it's raining, no matter if it's sunshiny, no matter if it's ice cold, no matter if it's terribly hot. You are going to produce. Why? Because I'm remaining in God. Let the storms come. I'm I'm remaining. Let the winter come. I'm remaining. Let the sun shine. I'm remaining. Why? Because he's the source of my life. So we got to stay in him. Amen. We got to remain in him. Look at the book of Lamentations chapter 3 verse 19 through 24. It says, I'll never forget the trouble. Don't you love that the Bible's real? How many of you have ever been through some trouble? It says, I'll never forget the trouble. I'll never forget the utter lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I've swallowed. I remember it all. Oh, how I well, I remember the feeling of hitting the bottom. Have you ever been there, hitting bottom? Then it goes on to say, but there's one other thing I remember. I've hit bottom. I've tasted poison. I've just about died. But there's another thing I remember. And remembering, I keep a grip on hope. 
God's loyal love couldn't have run out. His merciful love couldn't have dried up. They're created new every single morning. How great is your faithfulness? I'm sticking with God. I say it over and over. He's all I've got left. Yeah, that's good. Because some of you are facing the fight of your life right now. But this morning when that sun rose up and you opened your eyes and you realized it was a new day, His faithfulness, His love, and His mercies were chasing you down. You may feel like you're sinking and you're not going to make it, but God has said, I have never left you and I'm not about to now. You may feel like everybody else is talking about you and knows your business, but I'm here to tell you, God Almighty, the Creator of the universe knows your name and he's taking care of your business. I am preaching better than you are responding today. His faithfulness is good. His mercies are new and he is on your side. Come on, give him some praise today. I love this. I love this. Romans 8, 28, 31. It says, we know that in all things God works. Everybody say, in all things, God works. Look at your neighbor and tell him that means you too. And some of you are saying, thank God. Because I've been praying for them. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. There's that mentorship. We're being conformed into his image that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those he predestined, listen to this, he also called, you're called, and those he called, he also justified, you're justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. That means he's going to glorify you in the midst of your storm. <laughs> when people couldn't make it, you're going to make it. Everybody that said you weren't going to get through it, you're going to get through it. Why? Not because of your own efforts, but because God was in the middle of that thing. So what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So when we remain, we survive. When we remain, we survive. John 15, 5, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. So when we separate ourselves from God, we're going to struggle. But when we connect ourselves to God, we're going to thrive and survive. Amen? So we got to remain. You see, I can't make it one day without him, nor do I want to. I can't make it one second without him. I can't even get this body up out of my bed and onto the floor without him. Amen? I can't pastor a church without him. I can't be the dad I need to be without him. I can't be the husband I need to be without him. I can't do anything away from God. And it's the same for you. No matter who you are or what you do in this life, you are able to do it only because Jesus is in you. In he, he is in us. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. So when you're working your job, you're doing it because he's in you. When you're paying your bills, you're doing it because he provided enough to pay those bills. How many of you are thankful for that? When you are able to lead your families, you're doing it because he is in you. I'm here to tell you, he's the one that helps us through. We can't do it on our own, nor do we want to. Amen? So even in the fiercest of storms, he's there. Hebrews 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 1 Peter 5, verse 10, look at this scripture right here. It says, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? We love that line right there, don't we? Get to share in all of Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, the one who opened blinded eyes. We get to share in it. The one who raised the dead, we get to share in it. The one who walked on the water, we get to share in it. That's good. See, we love that. But look at the next line. So after you have suffered a little while, how many would love to be able to delete that out of the Bible? I mean, I've got some verses. I'm like, Lord, why does it have to be in here? So after you have suffered a little while, he will what? He will restore. 
He will support and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. So I've been sent here this morning to tell you, if you're suffering, do not give up. If you're going through a storm, don't throw in the towel. If you're facing the heat, don't succumb to the flames because after you have suffered for a little while and you're in the midst of it right now, he's working some support there for you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to set you up on a firm foundation. What does that mean? That means you're going to come out ahead. You're going to come out above. You're going to come out victorious. There's another scripture that says that I will build my church Jesus said and the gates of hell will not prevail why because he built it on a firm foundation who's the church you're the church get ready church it doesn't matter what the devil throws at you you're gonna make it you're gonna get through it you're gonna overcome amen man that excites me because I don't know about you I don't want to serve a savior that you're going through some hell in your life. It says, he says to you, well, yeah, you sure are. I hope you make it. He never doubts. God will get you through every season cycle. Every one of them, he'll get you through it. Every single cycle, he'll get you through it. Isaiah 43, verse 2 through 3, look at this right here. It says, don't be afraid. Let's go ahead and add in a few words of the season cycle. For I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. Hmm. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I am God. I am your personal God. The Holy of Israel. Your Savior. And I paid a huge price for you. Don't you know? That when Jesus paid the price for you, you became a valuable, valuable person in his eyes. He doesn't want to lose you. He doesn't want to drop you under some waves. He doesn't want you to sink. He doesn't want you to burn up. But he says, I've called your name. And this morning, I want you to know something. God knows your name. And he knows the storm you're facing. He knows what you're going through. But even in the midst of that storm, he can look at the wind and the waves. He can look at the flames and say, this one right here is mine. You can only come so far. This one right here is mine. You can't burn them. This one right here is mine. You're not going to take them under. This one right here is mine. And though they're between a rock and a hard place, they're going to come out on top. Why? Because it's mine. And I've called you by name. And I'm not going to allow any devil in hell to have what is mine. Amen? So who's going to get you through? God. And only God. It won't be your friends, your followers on Instagram or Snapchat. It won't be your pocketbook or your career. It won't be your marriage, your kids, or even those fun toys you get to enjoy. It's going to be God and God only. Because at the end of the day, at the end of this life, there will be one thing that will last to take you into eternity. And it will be God. It won't be how much money you made. It won't be all the friends in the world. It will be God. And no matter what you're facing today, if God is not in the middle of it, you're not going to make it like you could but if you will put God in the middle of your storm in the middle of your fire if you'll put God in the middle of summer and if you'll put God in the middle of fall and winter and spring I promise you or the word is not true he's going to see you through he's going to pick you up he's going to carry you when you can't walk and he's going to see that you overcome that thing that has been fighting against you and it's just time for us to serve notice upon the devil that he is is still defeated and he is still under our feet and we serve the God that can speak to the wind and speak to the waves and speak to the fire and get us through it and I'm just looking for a few people who know a God that can bring you through to give him some praise for the next few seconds come on praise him come on adore him come on love on him he's the one that got you through he's the one that's seen you through amen I might preach for this day's over. Whew. But as we close this service today, and I, 
And as we close, <laughs> he said, Oh. It's no secret that when you go through something, you get worn down. You kind of get empty. And you need something to touch you and fill you back up so that you can keep going. Some of us here today are going through so much in this season cycle that we're running on empty. But don't give up. Hold on. Because God wants to give you a fresh touch of his strength. God wants to give you a fresh fire and a fresh passion and a fresh vision to see yourself coming through this thing. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Everything you need is in his rest. John 15, verse 7, we read it earlier. He said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. The rest, the healing, the restoration, the new life. When we remain, we have the right to ask. And God has promised to grant. I close with these two verses right here. Matthew 9, 17 says this. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. For the old skins would burst from the pressure. You ever had some pressure in your life? <laughs> Spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine, new level, new purpose, new destiny is preserved when it's placed into a new wineskin. God wants to give you a new wineskin and fill you up with new wine. What is the wine in the Holy Spirit? His talk in the Bible discusses the Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit wants to fill you up from the bottom of your feet all the way up through the top of your head. So that when you're going through something, you're preserved. You're protected. You may go through it, but God shielded you from a whole bunch of stuff you didn't even know about. Why? Because I'm preserved. I'm held. I'm held together by him. Amen? And so we understand that. Last verse, Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. It says, have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. Amen? No one can measure the depths of his understanding. Look at this next slide. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Why? Because they're trusting in the Lord. You may have fallen. You may feel weak. You may feel weary. You may feel outrun and undone and completely like you're at the end of your rope. But God wants to give you a fresh touch that will help you understand and know the cycle is going to change. And when it does, you're going to still be in his hands and he's still going to take care of you. Amen? Amen. So bow your heads and close your eyes with me this morning. If you're here today and you would say, Pastor Taryn, I'm going through some storms in my life. I'm facing a cycle, a season cycle that is tough. And I just need to be renewed. I need strength. I need his touch. I need him to minister to me. Don't you leave this place without getting it. Because God wants to do for you what you were never meant to be able to do for yourself. Maybe you're away from the Lord today. You're not living for Him. Maybe you've never given your life to Him. But today you want to surrender your heart to Christ. You want to give Him your life. If that's you this morning, you would say, Taryn, I need Jesus in my heart and I know it. I know I'm not living for Him the way I need to and I want to start over with Him. If that's you, I want you to slip a hand up so I'll know who I'm praying for. And then you can put it right back down. One, two, three, four. Is there anyone else? There's five. There's six. Come on. Anyone else? There's seven. Is there anyone else? Just say yes. I know I need Jesus. You can put your hands back down. 
we're going to say a sinner's prayer together as a church. I want everybody to pray this out loud with me. Would you pray? Say, Dear Jesus, I believe in you. You're the Son of God. You died and rose again. And I invite you into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And help me from this day on to live for you, to serve you. This is a new day and a new season. And I accept it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? If you're feeling weak, if you feel like you're sinking, if you feel like you're between the rock and a hard place, if you feel like you're in the fire, I want you to come. Come on. If you need encouragement and strength today, I want you to come. Come on. If you need God's Spirit to touch you and build you up and help you, I want you to come. Come on. Come on. Don't hold, uh, don't, don't hold back. Don't worry about people that are leaving right now. You, you just focus on what God's doing in this room. It's more important. Come on. Come on. Come on. God brought you to this place so that you can know you're going to make it. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Come on. Come on. Bring your family. If your marriage is struggling today, come. If you're, if you're sick in your body, you need to come. If you're struggling with an addiction today, you need to come. Come on, if you're fighting at work and you're about to lose your job, you need to come. Come on, it's here that your strength is here, your peace is here, your, your ability to get up and keep going, it's here. Come on, we're waiting on you. Some of you are being stubborn right now. You're saying, I can do this. I'll get my act together. No, you can't do it. You can't get your act together. But he can. Come on, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Come on, don't hold back. I'm waiting on some people here. I know God is dealing with you. Come on. The quicker you come, the quicker we can pray and go to lunch. Shimon. <laughs> come on. Come on. He's calling. He's calling you by name, saying, come on, this is it. I've got it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want somebody behind every single person. Come on, church. Come on. That hand on your shoulder represents... Someone that's been in the storms and they know how to stand and get through it. Someone encouraged them. Now you can encourage someone else. But there's an invisible hand right now touching your heart and touching your mind. And it's Jesus. And he's saying, don't you dare give up. I'm right here with you. Don't you give up. I'm right here with you. Come on, pray for the one in front of you. Jesus, I thank you for a fresh touch. From the top of our heads down to our toes, would you fill us up fresh and new with your presence? Every storm has to bow right now at the name of Jesus. Every lie has to be shut down right now in the name of Jesus. Every struggle has to bow. Every storm has to be silenced. Every single lie of the enemy has to be shut down and is placed under our feet today. Jesus name Jesus name All things have passed away and your love has stayed the same your constant way
Aren't you glad that you came to church today? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I thought his pastor was pleading in the altar time. Even more important than the preaching itself is what happens in these altars right here. And I noticed as he was pleading, I thought to myself, there must be somebody here God is trying to get their attention. Because we don't normally linger. We just give the altar call, give you the privilege to come. But I noticed he kept saying, don't sit. Don't stay back. Don't miss this opportunity. In my spirit, it just churned and my heart began to move as I realized that what was happening was that God himself was pleading with people to come. Do you realize how much God loves you? Loves you so much that whenever there's wrong in your life, when there's pain, when there's hurt, he tugs at your heart with all that he can. He can't force you to come. He wouldn't force you to come. He could. He could make every one of us run to this altar, but it wouldn't do any good. You have to realize within yourself that you need him and that you want to trust him. So it was in times like this, and I just watched as slowly people continued to come as in some places when I was praying with people, it was three and four deep of people. And I thought, how wonderful to know that we serve a God that loves us, that is concerned about us, that wants every area of our life to be right, to a place that he would plead with you 
to come. So don't ever leave this church. Don't ever leave a type of service like this and carry your problems with you because we have a God that loves you and wants more than anything to meet your needs. So, Father, we thank you today because you love us so much, because you truly care about every person that's here and every situation of every individual's life. So much, God, that you watch over us every day, and when there's things that are not right, you will speak through your servants to plead with people to come because you simply want to meet our needs. You want to help us. And so, Father, I pray that today that not a single person will leave this place hurting, going through situations, things that they don't understand, but the day that they brought them to you because you said, come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. May we leave today in rest, knowing that you've taken from us the things that we cannot carry, and you're carrying them for us. We love you today, Father, and we thank you for this service. As we leave this place today, strengthen us and encourage us and help us, Lord, to do the very best we can for you because you've done your very best for us. In your name we ask it. Amen. Shake hands. Hug somebody's neck. God bless you. You're dismissed.